Hello there, fellow humans, and welcome to another shop video. And today we're going to have a look at the LKPZ70K because it is a new tank in the game right now. But first, let's have a look at the rest of the shop. The Iron Fest event where you can obtain barrels with beer mugs and the mugs, you can get them down here by buying gold. And the conversion is pretty terrible because 2.5k mugs you get down here for 110 euros and this vehicle costs 9 thousand of them it's obviously not worth it whatsoever but if you are buying a lot of gold or you are buying some of these bundles they do include these mugs so if you happen to to buy them i don't recommend buying them because all of this is gambling things and the tiger 131 and the vk aren't really worth it for this kind of money uh, even though the times five xps are unlocked so maybe that's worth something there but personally, I would just stay away from that. And the resources this time include credits. So we can skip that and go right to what is actually important. That is the tanks section. Fire and Ice used to be 7.5k. Now it's 8.5k. So it's even worse than it was already before. And then we have the MX-30B in here, which is a good enough vehicle. But I personally don't recommend it, especially not at this price. If you do want the MX-30B... I would just wait for it to be back in an auction or something like that because 22.5k for this vehicle uh, in this big bundle and the 20k in the just equipment bundle is a little bit excessive for this vehicle right here. already talked about the Storm of Steel in more in detail last week, but basically the Camara, good tank, the object, terrible tank, don't buy that. Personally, then we also have the T22 right here and if you compare the pricing of the mx 30 b 42 euros and the t22 this thing is 36 so it is going to be a lot cheaper but these times fives are locked you get more of them the times fives up here are also locked you're going to get some extra crates in here as well for the extra couple of euros but you're going to get less times fives and you're going to get all the boosters so personally whichever one you buy i would buy neither of these two then we have the g saw 7k gold pretty solid bundle i guess i mean it is equipment it is times 5 XP, 7k for this vehicle is pretty decent, but I reviewed this vehicle specifically last week. So if you want to know more about the GSO, watch last week's shop review because that's exactly where you can find out more about it. And then the crushers are a waste of space and the Canoniac Panzer isn't really that great either. But the Object 752 also made a specific video about that already, so check that out if you want to. And uh, it is an excellent vehicle. But now let's get to the lkpz whether this vehicle is actually any good or if it's just overpriced as every new vehicle in the game the lkpz 70k starts off with 1600 hit points and 50 millimeters armor on the turret and 35 on the hull the hull is very well sloped as you can see right here which means don't shoot at the upper plate because things can bounce just shoot at the lower plate because that's going to essentially a guaranteed penetration, and in most cases is possible with the HE as well. And the turret is extremely tiny, and it is also not very well armored, so you can fire at it, but it's very small, so especially from the front, you're going to have a very tough time hitting it, even though this plate right here on the side can be hit with a very accurate gun. DPM is only 2,300, which is quite weak with a 9 second reload on 340 alpha damage on the AP shells with 251 millimeters of penetration. So penetration on the standard shell, pretty good. The alpha damage, 340, it's pretty solid, I guess, but the DPM on this vehicle is quite weak. Now, the premium heat pen is 319 with calibrated. It's good enough. 290 alpha damage here, 3.1 seconds aim time, 0.27 dispersion, so that's very good there. Only 7 degrees of gun depression, which is the same the Leopard has now, but it is not great for a German vehicle of this type. And the average speed of the vehicle is 41, power to weight ratio is 25, it is a light tank, so that's expected. And traverse rate is especially good at 50 on the turret and 63 on the hull. And a more special look at the armor as well, it doesn't have any. I mean, the sides are quite well angled, so if you're shooting at the side of the vehicle, go for the track side down here to avoid any random angle bounces, because even though it has no armor, it does have angled plates to it, like the front plate right here. If you use the gun depression here, it are going to probably not get penned, so obviously lower plate is going to be he able by anything. And really, a tank that has no armor only has no armor at normal angles. Obviously, at 85 degrees, most plates are going to be able to bounce a shell. So remember that when you say a vehicle has no armor, it doesn't mean that it doesn't bounce shells at extreme angles. And this vehicle is going to be good at that because the plate here are angled out quite a lot. Same for the rear plate as well. 
these are quite well angled but they're extremely thin and quite pointless the turret as well as already mentioned you can pen this plate on the side you can also pen this plate down here and you can also pen the gun mantlet itself so you can pen this thing basically anywhere that isn't an extreme angle All right, let's play one battle live with this vehicle and then i also have a very nice replay for you that i got a couple of days ago in this thing so let's have a look now mediums three and four we have the advantage very nice it's always good and war gaming uh it would be very nice to fix this problem that decides matches way too often where one team has more mediums the more mediums overwhelm the enemy mediums and then swoop around the back to take out the heavies so that is one of the Worst things that Blitz still has to offer right now. Wargaming changed the crew system, if you haven't noticed yet, which is very lovely. But that is something that I think has to be worked on as well. But nonetheless, what do you think about the event that the vehicle's in? Obviously, it is complete pay to win. And what do you think about the vehicle itself? Put it down in the comments. Because remember, I'm just some guy on the internet. Every other YouTuber is just some guy on the internet. And taking their word as the holy uh, whatever is not what you should do. Always think for yourself, because if you don't think, you don't get better. So let's see what we can do here. The E50 is going to go down. Obviously, this vehicle is not good. Like you cannot in any way classify this vehicle as a good tank. You can enjoy it, you can like it, but I don't think objectively calling this a good tank would be false. So I'm not going to be doing that. Peek around the back here. Obviously, if it had a bit more DPM. Uh, then we could talk about it, but in this current form, what's the damn point? Let's see, we're gonna have to go around the back here again. Those two mediums are hopefully gonna push. There is an AMX that I'm gonna have to be careful of. Seven degrees of gun pressure is not enough to peek that corner properly. But that is not very nice. Obviously, now the defender is gonna try and push me. There is the extreme angle of the front plate right there. Has nothing to do with armor thickness, just armor angle. I'm gonna peek again. Take out the defender. Low on HP. Know why they're not pushing forward faster hello hello what you doing okay that solved now we're gonna solve the e50 if i reload in time wait half an hour longer right here damn it's not very good now this vehicle currently is equipped with the uh rammer but i obviously would recommend using the calibrated yourself you can try both but in this case the uh if with the calibrated the reload is going to be 8.8 .8 seconds instead of 8.4 so let's see where the object is at obviously we know where the amx is i to get some meaty object as well but don't send your meaty object to children i to be very careful here obviously because i can get one shot now and the guy is very interested he's looking at me looking towards me i'm gonna peek him now because he's starting to look away which is very good and now we are gonna simply swoop down here Take another shot, and that should be just about fine. Maybe he has another shell. Could have had another shell, but he didn't get it. Gun elevation on this vehicle isn't terrible, as you can see as well. So, that's just fine. And that's 3k damage. Well, next. And now we get into another battle. This one is a replay. I played a total of four actual battles in this vehicle, and then I played a fifth one because I needed a thumbnail, because the replays were gone, which you just saw. So, this is going to be the best one out of that set. The others were these. I mean, the vehicle, it works. But it's me. It's not the tank that's performing here. So, now we're going to peek the middle here. Obviously, you could also go to the city side here. But 7 degrees of gun depression is enough to play this location right here. So, that's what I decide to do. The turret, again, very tiny. So, you can peek without much repercussion in terms of getting shot at. You just have to be doing it very quickly. Peek out fast and then reverse back again. Obviously, you want to aim your shells. It does have good aim time. It does have really good accuracy so that's not going to be a problem here with this vehicle especially if the enemy team is like that obviously again remember this is a press account so this is going to be new matchmaking so you know the quality of matches is going to be a lot less than if you were to play it you know on a advanced account obviously i personally don't own the vehicle i don't have any intention to doing so because i don't spend money on this game anymore uh, but just to have that disclaimer in there this is a press account in most likely low uh, skill matchmaking so keep that in mind and uh yeah object just can pen the turret see that just just goes straight through the turret anyway there is no noticeable armor on this vehicle whatsoever so you tell me 
in the comments. Are you a fan of pay-to-win events where you have to pay multiple hundred euros for a tank that's barely worth 20? <laughs> you tell me. Now again, I'm doing the same thing that I do pretty much every time I play a light and a medium tank. I go somewhere to the middle or the medium side, and then from there, I'm going to play reactionary of... Okay, there's an enemy I can shoot at, there's an enemy I can shoot at, there's an enemy I can shoot at, and I'm going to find them in my crosshairs, and I'm going to peek whenever I get a shot, and my risk of getting shot isn't that high, like, for example, right here. I'm not going to get shot by anybody, because I know the two guys are over there, they can't shoot me, the guys in the city, they can't shoot me unless they peek uh, the open uh, hole there. They don't, so I can fire at them right there. It's always about where can you fire without getting shot back, so that's about it. Now, the Yeguru just... This is very simple matchmaking right here, like, I'm not achieving much here, and really calling this get battle an achievement would be kind of wrong to it, because all I'm doing is just sitting in the middle here, and like, looking left, right, center, wherever somebody peeks, and is completely not paying attention to the situation, because as long as you pay attention to the situation, you're already gonna be good enough that you can start enjoying the game and have to stop worrying about stats basically because that's the goal right you want to stop worrying about your stats and start just enjoying the game while being good enough to carry your own weight and not be a drag on your team that's the main goal in my opinion at least so yeah again 57 heavy just sitting there gonna go for the track again for him some extra assistance damage probably because i'm not gonna get another shot because dpm is 2300 which is a, not so great i mean 2600 2700 is what you should expect at the least from a vehicle like this but it works right you can drag even the worst of vehicles to high performance if you are a really good player there is no doubt about that but a vehicle like this it's just not worth it there isn't any inherent value in owning a vehicle like this but i think this should have been this should have been a t9 tech tree to the rheinmetall panzerwagen as a t10 continuation from the io2 of one like, you go IU-2 oh, for one, you go this one, you go Rheinmetall Panzerwagen, you got a nice little two-tank tech tree. But, well, gotta pay for it now. It would be decent as a tech tree, I'll, I'll be honest, but having to pay for it, eh, not really worth it for that kind of money, obviously, because it's still real money they have to spend on this game, and this vehicle is not worth it whatsoever. Now, especially not at the price that it is currently in the shop at. But that's just what I'm saying every damn time. There are good tanks that Wargaming releases from time to time, this is not one of them. This vehicle is there. It's not terrible, but it's not good either. So, once again, another tank release. Another pointless tank release. And here's the thing. Wargaming and World of Tanks Blitz reached the point where there are already so many good vehicles in the game that a tank either needs to be interesting or needs to be really strong to be worth even considering at the prices that they are at. And that is not the case for this vehicle whatsoever. So... Just because it's new doesn't mean it has value. It has value based on its comparison to other vehicles and also based on its playability and enjoyability. And while it can be a lot of fun, it's not really the best of tanks and I don't recommend it.